Welcome to A Tale of Two Cities, a special series on Vion, a one-of-a-kind series that will delve into the intricate and peculiar connection between cities that are in no way an obvious likely pair. We'll travel around the globe to show how mankind is interwoven in a web of distinct narratives. With a degree from Harvard and having established a global presence with his own practice, C.P. Kukreja Architects, renowned urban planner and architect, Dikshu Kukreja, set sail on a journey to eight cities of the world, talking to presidents, prime ministers, mayors, and furthering the belief that we are indeed closer than we think. Today, very interestingly, he pairs Bogota in Colombia with Ahmedabad in India. So let's go over to Dikshu and see what he has in store for us. Colombia is home to the Amazon rainforests, which are considered the lungs of the planet. It is the second most biodiverse country in the world. Here, you find more species of birds and butterflies than anywhere else. Along with its natural heritage, Colombia also prides itself on being the cradle of one of the oldest human civilizations. Today, we will look at the capital of the country, Bogota, the city which is a germane representation of the panoramic multiculturalism of Colombia. Bogota has transformed its dystopian urban neighborhoods into that of a city that represents a crucible for hope. Once a battleground for fighting factions, the city now belongs to its citizens. Hundreds of cities all over the world have drawn inspiration from what Bogota has established. The experiments carried out in edifying the socio-spatial integration and reasserting civil society found their ripples in the Indian city of Ahmedabad. Considered one of the fastest growing cities in the world, Ahmedabad has India's oldest and most successful bus rapid transit system BRTS. The planners adopted the Bogota model quite skillfully and appropriated it to the Indian road conditions, winning praises from urbanists all over the world. The similarities between the two might not be as noticeably apparent. While Bogota is considered one of the highest capital cities in the world, Ahmedabad is located on a plain along a river that receives marginal amounts of rain. Despite their topographical differences though, Ahmedabad shares numerous attributes with Bogota in terms of its urbanism, cultural practices and arts. Today, I have the distinguished honor of having a conversation with a man who is known all over the world, not only for his tremendous leadership qualities, but his passion for the environment. I'm sitting here today to discuss about two cities, Bogota and Ahmedabad, with the Honorable President of Colombia, Mr. Ivan Duque. Mr. Duque is known for his concern for the environment and he has actually authored a two volume book, The Orange Economy, which is talking about how we need to really look at cities in a different perspective altogether. So I'm really excited to see what facets this conversation is going to bring forward today and which will be shared with all of you. So Mr. President, such an honor to be here with you in this most beautiful city and a fantastic country. Dixers, uh Great honor for me to have you here in Colombia. I'm so delighted that you're visiting Colombia and enjoying the landscapes of this beautiful country that has this uh, microclimates all over the place, that has Amazonic land, that has high altitude ecosystems, that has beaches, and that have cities 
that live in a permanent interaction with nature. So that's why, as you will say, we're promoting biodiverse cities, which are cities that can protect biodiversity. Absolutely. But you know, the first thing that comes to a person's mind when you talk to them about Bogota is that this was a city which many perceive as a city in anarchy. There was social upheaval here. There were problems of uh, crime and other aspects. And now it's literally a utopia. And this has all happened, I believe, with a lot of municipal interventions. So I would love to hear from you how a transformation of this magnitude can take place in a city. Well, I think that's a great question because definitely Bogota has evolved in the last three decades. At some point in time, Bogota used to look like Gotham City. It was uh, a lot of despair. People were unhappy. There was a lot of traffic. No... Uh, neighborhood uh, solutions that could provide people the, the sense of, of, of um, being members of our community. And I think that has changed. Obviously, it's a city that has been evolving, but I think in the last three decades, there has been major change. And when you look at my administrations in the last four years, we have been able to bring to the city the biggest investment ever. So we started funding now the first line of the Metro that is now in pre-construction phase. And we're announcing in the next week that we're giving the resources for the second line of the Bogota Metro. We have basically contributed to have three of the most important uh, corridors for people to improve their way of living in the north of Bogota called Accesos Norte. We have the southern a longitudinal um, a road, and we have now the access to the rest of the country when it comes to the to the um, western plains in of of uh, uh, or the eastern plains of Colombia, and also the connection between uh, Bogota and the center of the country. So that's important. But the other thing that we have contributed is that we have expanded the coverage of the police service, and today we have reached the lowest homicides rates ever in Bogota, since we use those indicators. And we're also making Bogota a center of the arts and culture and tourism. And actually, in my administration, the biggest cultural infrastructure investment ever done by a Colombian government took place. And we inaugurated the new National Center for the Arts. Absolutely. And I think culture can bring such a transformation in people's lives and also their sense of belonging to a city. For example, if we talk about Gujarat and Ahmedabad, nothing can be as vivacious there as a festival called Navratri, which is a nine-day festival celebrating the nine forms of Goddess Durga. And at that time, people are in such a celebratory mood where they all come out in their traditional costumes and they dance to the folk music. It's something fascinating. I know there's something similar here in Colombia called the Barranquilla. And here, uh, in fact, it's one of the largest festivals in the world. When we look at Colombia, the Barranquilla Carnival is maybe the second largest carnival in the Americas after the carnival in Rio de Janeiro. But it's also um, an opportunity for people to gather, for communities to engage, to share. And, um, and we have been promoting the carnival, not only to be strong for the Colombian audience, but also to bring people from, uh, from, from other countries. And uh, what's nice is that there's a tradition of costumes, of music, their music festivals. If we go back in history, we see that, of course, we all have studied and heard about the Spanish conquistadors, which happened a few hundred years ago. But really, Colombia is a cradle to one of the world's oldest civilizations, and it goes hundreds and thousands of years back. So we know about how the Incas lived in such harmony with the Andes, with the natural environment. There was the rivers which were flowing through, which uh, promoted trade and fishing activities. So tell us a little bit about that part of Colombia, which has held such a special uh, moment and a, a special position in history. It's called the pre-Columbian. Uh, Americas. We see that there were empires in Central America. You have basically the Aztecas in Mexico, but you also have the Mayans. Yes. And the Mayans were very strong. They loved to build powerful infrastructure. They had these amazing gatherings and they created a strong sense of, of being an empire, if we could call it that way. In the case of the Incas, the Incas are even more 
more recent than we can expect. But the Incas were also, they also had the sense of empire, even though they were geographically more closed. So that's why you have Machu Picchu, Huayna Picchu, as these places where the Incas used to gather. But they brought commerce and they brought a lot of products to create that big environment. In the case of Colombia, it was different because the major tribe that we had, that were the Chipchas, the Chipchas didn't have that, that willingness of building majestic infrastructure, but they were a clever tribe. They, they were creative, they were innovative, they loved to work in agriculture, they loved uh, to work in, in producing uh, elements that were conceived as a way to elevating their culture in some sort of, a, of an inspira a spiritual connection with, with the whole world. But even after the Chipchas established, we also saw other families of tribes that were distributed throughout this country. So each tribe that, that had this umbrella of, of uh, being born within the Chichas had its own conditions, and they were able to create their own identity. That Golden Museum shows you the capacity that they had to manage gold and create this beautiful set of assets that were also instrumental in the offerings that they continuously made to the gods. And something that I also value is that we still have in Colombia uncontacted tribes in the Amazon. So we have continued to embrace that we are multicultural, but that we also respect the cosmovisions of those tribes. So this has been an evolutionary process, and I consider that we feel very proud of that heritage. So that's something about uh, Colombia and Colombian people that I understand, that it's, it's a society which is very inclusive which has people here have a lot of empathy. For example, when there was such a man-made economic crisis in Venezuela, I know people in Colombia, the households here, they welcomed uh, their neighbors from Venezuela and uh, kept them or rather uh, received them in their homes indefinitely. So this speaks a lot about how Colombians love to live in peace and harmony with their neighbors. Tell us a little bit more about this. We have, we have a country where the majority of the people in Colombia are happy people, good people, working people, with uh, strong spiritual ties, majoritarily Catholic or Christian, but with a sense of, of uh, having a moral duty on a permanent basis. So I think that tells about our society. However, we have been a society that have also, has also suffered from violence. We had to live with uh, the cartels, we had to live with terrorist groups, but we have a resilient country because not even in those hard moments, we, we demonstrate that we were able to keep on growing and, 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 and creating new industries and getting to new markets. Mm -hmm. And that's something that defines the Colombian. The Colombian ha is a true expression of resilience as a value. But something that is also nice that you mentioned is that we brought to our country Venezuelan's brothers and sisters that were in despair that were suffering from the brutal dictatorship of Nicolás Maduro. And we had almost 2 million Venezuelans in the Colombian soil. And it was my administration, the one that said, you know what, we're gonna grant for 10 years a temporary protection status for those Venezuelans who have come to Colombia and are not visible. They, they can't open a bank account, they can't buy a house, they, they can look for a decent job. They're not in the formal workforce and they don't have access to social security. So we said, you know, we're making this decision and it was pretty unpopular. It is pretty unpopular. And nowadays, with all the migration pressure in the world, making these kinds of decisions is profoundly unpopular. But what the hell with the popularity? It was our moral duty to do it and we did it. So when we talk about um, Bogota and Ahmedabad, when we talk about Colombia and Gujarat, the one thing that comes to anybody's mind is music. Music is so ingrained in both these places. For example, Gujarat, many parts of that state are really desolate deserts, a desert area. And in that, what people find is just solitude and, and there's literally no sound. So the sound comes from what they create as music. And even the camels there are adorned with bells. So as they walk in the frisillating dusk light, they, uh, their sound of their j uh, jingle jangle in a way brings some sound to the desert. 
And this kind of thing is very special in Gujarat. Also, if you see their garbha, their dance form, it's something which is such a strong tradition that hopefully it will be in the intangible World Heritage List of UNESCO. So, same way we see here that in uh, Colombia, there's the music, I was listening to this music and I found it fascinating, the Vallenato music. And in that, I also discovered something interesting, which is where two musicians suddenly literally act as players and they start uh, challenging each other impromptu. And that it's called Picaria, I believe that's a form that takes place within Vallenato, which we in India also have the parallel called Jugalbandi, where two, two musicians will impromptu create, you know, start competing in a friendly manner with each other. I would love to hear from you about music and how you feel this tradition, this culture, the folk traditions of Colombia are all about. So music is all over the place and this country has beautiful music. And what I like about the Vallenato is that the Vallenato is the true blend of, of, of a variety of cultures. So the Vallenato has the guitar, which was the, the one of the first uh, ways to, to start transmitting the messages of what was happening in town. But then came the accordion. And the accordion, it symbolizes the migrants, the German migrants that came to Colombia with an accordion. So the accordions were basically dismantled and rebuilt in order to have the affination that it had in order to be played. And then we had the huacharaca, which is an instrument that comes from the indigenous communities. And then we have the tambora, which comes from the uh, African Colombian communities. So vallenato is a, it's a mixture of all those influences. I've been traveling around the country and thank you so much for your wonderful hospitality. My family has also been enjoying, you know, uh, when I see the infrastructure in Medellin and Cartagena and in Bogota. I mean, Bogota has brought to the world a new concept of the BRT, the Bus Rapid Transit mm -hmm. System. And I've myself now experienced that and seeing it run so efficiently in such a large city, the Transmilenio, which was introduced 20 years ago. In fact, Ahmedabad also is one of the first cities in India which introduced the same bus rapid transit system inspired by Bogota. So we have many parallels between these two cities. But what I want to get to is the larger aspect, which is about climate change. And I know how close that is to your heart. In fact, it, it's something that I worry about a lot as well. When you see that almost 10 million hectares of trees are being cut every year, which translates to literally one football field per second of trees being cut in all over the world. Uh, when I heard you at Davos about your concept of biodiverse cities, I thought it was fascinating. The environment is part of my heart, is part of my soul, and it has been part of my vision. And, and I feel happy that throughout my administration, we were able to do things that I always thought were crucial for Colombia. So we expanded electric vehicles in Colombia. We created for Colombia a rapid energy transition where we have multiplied by 100 times the installed capacity we had in solar and wind just four years ago. We have created a circular economy policy where we have the idea of bringing the private sector to the concept of produce conserving, conserve producing. We have basically incorporated the protection of 260,000 hectares with 10,000 families with the payment for environmental services. We created a program called HECO, Herencia Colombia, with the biggest uh, philanthropic environmental institutions from the world in order to protect areas of the country that are crucial spots. And we have basically duplicated the protected areas in Colombia. And instead of waiting till 2030 for the Leaders Pledge for Nature to take place, we decided to have 30% of the Colombian land declared a protected area this year. And we, we created a climate action bill that was approved unanimously in Congress. We look forward to all Thank of you that. So much. And as we discussed earlier as well, we share that common passion for the environment. I've always believed and said that even in architecture, architecture is about not creating at the cost uh, uh, creating a built environment at the cost of nature, but being, building something which is besides nature. They can coexist happily. So yes, it's wonderful. And once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. And I have to say that it's an honor to have you in Colombia with your family. And I hope that you keep on enjoying this, this trip, this visit. Well, that was the tale of two cities, Bogota and Ahmedabad. 
While geographically divergent, the journeys of Bogota and Ahmedabad have intersected recurrently. While Bogota has spearheaded some of the most experimental interventions in urban development, Ahmedabad is the hotbed of architecture and urban planning philosophies in India. Ahmedabad preserves rich architectural heritage from the Sultanate period of the Middle Ages, known as the Walled City, which has continued to flourish for over 600 years and has been recognized as World Heritage by UNESCO. Master architects Louis Kahn and Le Corbusier have added beautiful strokes to the urban canvas of the city. Transformation in both these cities has also happened correspondingly. That is to say, what has worked in Bogota as an urban intervention has also alleviated the urban problems in Ahmedabad. Bogota shows us that despite upheavals, socio-political turmoil and differences in opinion, it is possible to breathe a new life in the city. It is possible to reverse years of combative tendencies of the people by including them in policy making and by giving them quite literally the right to their own city. From our vantage point, it is difficult to see where we are headed as a species, but Bogota gleams with the hope that it will be a good place. <laughs>